good morning everyone today we shall take up chapter number 2 we are not afraid to die if we can all be together written by gordon cook and alan east there is a saying about bravery what is that promise yourself to be strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true think only of the best work only for the best and expect only the best forget the mistakes of your past and press on to the greater achievements of the future give so much time to the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others live in the faith that the whole world is in your side and as long as you are true to the best that is in you these are the lines we can say about the voyagers about the voyagers of wave walker this particular story is about a is about a travel around the world by a family from england we are not afraid to die if we uh, if we can all be together as the title suggest actually it is an adventurous ordeal on sea it is an account of the narrator's grit and courage and bravery to face adversities atrocities of weather and the sea especially when when one enjoys the faith and support of his kith and kin his family you can say right this chapter is really a very heart touching and heart rending i would say account of how the family of the narrator his wife his son and his daughter that is a close encounter they have a close encounter with death during their voyage around the world after crossing cape town their boat wave walker was caught in rough seas and was very badly damaged how how the conviction that they would suddenly save themselves saved their life really saved their life so my dear students let's go through this particular chapter and find out what actually the conditions were we are not afraid to die if we can all be together in july 1976 in july 1976 my wife mary son jonathan 6 daughter suzanne 7 and i set sail from plymouth you can open your books now and start reading okay we started in the boat wave walker now this is plymouth plymouth is in england they started they set sail set sail here means that they started they started their journey to uh, around the world they start on a sea voyage you can say to duplicate the round the world voyage made 200 years by captain james cook he is james cook who took a round of the whole world around 200 years ago and they wanted to repeat the same sail for the longest time mary and i a 37 year old businessman had dreamt of sailing sailing in the wake of famous explorer yes james cook we wanted to repeat repeat the feast the feat of sorry the feat of james cook and for the past 16 years we had spent all our leisure time honing our seafaring skills seafaring skills you can say to deal with the problems that come in the sea in the boat right we practiced 
and uh, just uh, you can say we equipped ourselves with all the skills that are required uh, while sailing the boat in British waters. In British waters, they just took their boats, uh, took their boat, and through all bad weathers, they just tried to uh, do practice of it. Our boat wave walker, our boat was wave walker, wave walker, twenty three meter thirty ton wooden hulled beauty had been professionally built. Wooden hulled beauty is stand for. Wooden hulled, uh, there it is. It was a wooden uh, made boat. Uh, there you can see the hull. Uh, let me just uh, point it out through some. Uh, there it is. This is the hull, right? At the bottom, that you are, as you are seeing. Wooden hull beauty. This whole bait was wooden wooden boat it was right now what's next and we had spent months fitting it out fitting it out there it is These seafaring skills were there. We fitting it out and testing it in the roughest weather we could find. Roughest weather where the sea waves are huge and we just walked through and uh, and just did our practice all together. Right? The first leg of our planned three year, one lakh five thousand kilometer journey passed pleasantly. The first leg uh, was from Britain to South Africa. As we sailed down the western coast of South Africa to Cape Town. This is the seaport of Cape Town. They reached Cape Town. Then we took two crewmen. What do you mean by crewmen? Crewmen here stand for the people who help in sailing the boat or you can say the staff of the boat or staff of the ship. They are called crewmen. Two crewmen they were taken. American Larry Vigil and Swiss Herb Sizzler to help us in tackle one of the world's roughest seas the southern Indian Ocean now from Africa from Cape Town they are to they are to move east and uh, reach the roughest of the seas of the world that is uh, Indian Ocean now come to the next page on our second day out of Cape Town we began to encounter strong gales strong gales strong winds for the next few weeks they blew continuously gales did not worry me actually the cause of worry was not the not the winds but the size of the wave waves was alarming up to 15 meters oh my god up to 15 meters high means uh, you can say two-storied building the waves were rising up to two-storied building 15 meters even more than that even you can say right and that was up to main up uh, as high as our main mast what do you mean by mast actually mast uh, uh, let me show you what is mast is this is mast the main halyard is called mast here it has been mentioned here uh, let me let me show you what actually the mast is uh, this is mast uh, this pole the central pole is called mast okay now Again, we come to the page, right? December 25 found 3,500 kilometers east of Cape Town. Despite atrocious weather, atrocious, very harsh weather, we had a wonderful holiday complete with a Christmas tree. Wow. We enjoyed Christmas there on our boat, right? 
New Year's Day saw no improvement in weather, but we reasoned that it had to change soon. We had some reasons. We were quite sure that it would be changed. It and it changed. The weather did change, but for the worse. Worse, some bad to occur. At dawn on January two, the waves were gigantic. The waves were gigantic. we were sailing with only a small storm jib do you know what a jib is this is jib that is smaller one jib we call it jib uh let me show you this is jib jib sail that uh, smaller one this one was right i'll show you later in the video what actually the jib is what actually the jib is right and we're still making 8 knots speed of the wind speed of the waves as the ship rose to the top of each wave we could see the endless enormous seas when the when the uh, ship rose over the waves right crossing the waves and it uh, moved on then the whole sea could be seen rolling towards us huge waves were there and the screaming of the wind and spray was painful when it splashed against our boat when the waves splashed against our boat it was quite painful to our ears it struck hard to slow down the boat to slow the boat down we dropped the storm jib also we dropped them and lashed it with heavy mooring rope some heavy mooring rope this is mooring rope right heavy mooring rope uh, you can say the rope that tied uh, different parts of it mooring rope across the stern in a loop against the stern stern the back part of the boat then we double lashed everything double lashed we tightly uh, tied everything uh, double with the rope and our life raft drill we started our life rafting drills it means just practicing how to save life we attached lifelines also lifelines some you can say jackets and other uh, you can say uh, equipment that were there with us done oil skins these are the oil skins the 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 upper, the clothing that you have been seeing you have been seeing these are called oil skins we just rubbed even oil on on oil on our body also and life jackets we wore and waited waited for what waited for the inevitable to come the first indication of the impending disaster came at about 6 pm with an ominous silence ominous silence means ominous means extremely extremely you can say silence extreme silence was observed right and the ominous means signaling something future signaling something dangerous or evil in future to to happen right huge silence was observed what happened we the wind dropped and the sky immediately grew dark then came a ground a growing roar and an enormous cloud towered aft of the ship aft of the ship at the topmost part of the ship with horror i realized that it was not a cloud oh my god it was not a cloud but a wave like no other i had ever seen in my life huge wave was seen and it perfectly vertical almost twice the height of the other waves huge wave as you are seeing in the picture it is almost 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 30 meters with a frightful breaking crest crest the top most of the top part of the uh, uh, you can say the bay uh, of the boat that was uh, that immediately stood you can say vertical to the boat the roar increased with thunder as the stern moved up and face of the bay up the face of the bay means the back part of the wave was immediately straightened just vertical to the to the sea 
राइट right? एंड देन वट है फॉर ए मोमेंट आई थाट वी माइट राइड ओवर इट मीन्स वी थाट की ओके द शिप आवर बोट वुड राइड ओवर इट विट वुड क्रॉस इट ओवर बट देन अ ट्रिमेंडस एक्सप्लोजन शुप द डेक ए ह्यूज बिग एक्सप्लोजन शुप द डेक मीन्स ब्रोक द डेक इवन ए टॉरेंट ऑफ ग्रीन एंड वाइट वाटर ब्रोक ओवर द शिप टॉरेंट ऑफ वट यू मीन बाई टॉरेंट ऑफ torrent here stand for a violent stream of water right a violent stream of water was there over us over the ship my head smashed into the wheel wheel you understand what is the wheel wheel is there just to guide the ship just that you can say to guide the rudder and i was aware of the flying overboard and sinking below the waves completely we were under water i accepted my approaching death i thought my uh, death is near and as i was losing consciousness i felt quite peaceful i felt quite peaceful so dear children uh, here i just stop this video and we shall approach to the second part of it thank you